Welcome back everybody. So today we have a very, very awesome video. Lindsay has found success over the last, I'd say year or so here at ASFX, but lately she's been on fire. So I wanna to talk to her, hopefully to pull some valuable lessons over what's working and what she's avoiding that's leading to the success that she's found. So today is September 1st, 2020. Last month for August, Lindsay, you said you finished up just over 24%, is that correct? Yeah, 24.3%. And when people hear that, I think it's becoming more common, which is good. But like, if you go back 10, 15 years ago to like my dad's generation of day traders, he would hear that. He'd be like, that's crazy. I'm looking for 6% a year and that's it. 20% in a month. It's like, no, nobody's doing that. You're gambling. But now as more and more people are getting involved in trading, you're seeing how common I think returns like that are, especially when you're trading with a system. So over that last month of August, what were some of the biggest lessons that you took from the trades that you took and maybe some of the trades that you didn't take? I, I think it's still all about just staying on your path and your lane and not getting sidetracked by others. And for me, I know the kind of setups that I've back tested that work for me. Right. So I'm basically just looking for the repeatable patterns that have proven success for me coming even in from June, July and into August. And I've just been keeping doing the same things. It, I did put a post up about when trading becomes boring. It's, I, can't, I can't remember how it goes, but how it should really be, you know, you know exactly where you're pulling the trigger because your rules of your entry are so precise. There's no excitement and in it. It's not like no you're getting emotional no, to take that no, trade. That's what no. you're saying. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I just feel now my trades just come natural to me because I know exactly where in the system I'm pulling that trigger and I'm keeping that going throughout, trying to stick to more, say, the B setups coming in so that I know that I'm putting that 2% risk on and it's a high probability trade. The risk reward's there for me. And I know if it's a good trade, then I only have to do a couple of them a week right. to be up on a good week. Right. So when you are saying the B setups for people that don't trade our system, we grade our trades A, B, yeah. C. Some people go a little bit more detailed. I had a one-on-one -on -one with Tom, uh, one of the guys in the group, the newer guys. He's, yeah. he's an engineer. He has a background in engineering. So he's super analytical and he grades his A, B, C, D. Like he goes into super right. detail with it. Uh -huh. But regardless, the grading system is super important. So how yeah. long ago did you cut out C setups? Because I haven't seen you trade a C setup in a long time. I, I would say, I had, no, I had had a couple of ones off the 200 in August, but because I had like, they weren't, I, so not so much that they weren't C setups, it was off the 200 and because of the success I had, I would have more, more, so the not treated that as a C setup, say in June or July. Coming into August, I have been putting another half percent onto them because they have they have been proven and working for me. As long as the TDI and stuff on the higher time frames Lines are bringing up. into my favour, so I always tell them the only way I would trade it off the two hundred and give it is that if the extra higher time half. Frames line. As if it's the higher time frame. That makes sense, like and that, that was kind of what you were talking about in the last video we did when yeah. you were talking about adapting, where it's like yeah. you've been adapting yes. a little bit. Interesting. Okay. Now, that, and it's kind of cool to see that coming full circle. So back to what you said originally. You, yeah. you are trying to do the, just the thing that you portray. You know, you do it less, you do it um, better. Do it better bigger. and do it bigger. So yep. if I put on that half a percent, then yeah. that is me doing it bigger because I, I believe in that, on that setup. Right, right. And the, when, you're, when you go down the checklist of grading it, you can shift the probabilities there. So yep. the position size yep. can match that grade. Yes. And then that is where you can have kind of like that natural feeling of yep. the trading. And yep. the natural, the way that I describe you when people ask like how you've become so consistent is I really do explain it as you're very balanced. Like you don't ever get too aggressive in your positions. You also don't trade too small where you don't feel no attachment to it. Like you have a very balanced risk profile, risk appetite, yeah, you call it. Yeah, because I think that when I even say to some of my coaching clients is you've got to, if you've back tested a, a setup mm -hmm. and you've seen, you know, the probabilities are put in your favor, it's a high probability setup, you've got to mm -hmm. give the trade what it's worth and right. your risk appetite. Pulling the trigger is so hard though. Like we were just talking about it yeah. earlier. Some of the guys are really struggling when the setup does present 
one part of the struggle that I've seen is that they don't want to realize that it is that easy. If you've done the testing and you know it's a system, mm -hmm. when it's mm -hmm. there, it's meant to be there. You've tested it. You've shown it comes up all the time. It's there. Take it, you know, and they don't want to take it. So what do you think has, because I know, I'm sure you can relate. There goes these periods where you don't trade for a few days, you're waiting for a good setup. And then when it does present, you almost hesitate sometimes to not take that trade because you haven't traded for a few days. Mm -hmm. What do you do to stay sharp to prevent the hesitation? I just know that like, even yesterday, so I sat flat yesterday, we created the regenerated ideas, but I know that there, there's always going to be an opportunity presents that we can get into the next day or the next day. Well, ha for always. me anyway, I right. have not, from June, yeah. I have averaged two to three trades every week. But see, like, and I'm glad that you're sharing that because I think a lot of people think trading means you need to take 20 trades a week, 30 trades no. a week. Do less, do no. it better, do it bigger. Say 50 uh -huh. million times, right? Yeah, so if you're yeah. averaging two to three trades per week and you're winning two or three of those two or three trades, you can really roll these percentages and see the account grow. When you don't trade, when you have the days in between where it's like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no trade, and then the thing comes on Thursday, what are you doing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to stay on point? I know you do the daily recaps with me. You're always in the call with I'm me still, every day. I'm still on, the, on my trading session. I'm always committed to being sat at my trading desk. Throughout Even my yesterday on the bank holiday, but keep going. I was still there. Yeah. Yep, yep. And really, I was only looking at Euro USD yesterday because I knew that British pound bank holiday, I really didn't want to trade any British pound right. pairs. And it's so um, good. I just have to say, it's so good that we waited yesterday on the bank holiday and then got rewarded on it today. We yeah, traded GBP CAD today, yeah, you yeah. know, the next day. And so people, I think, yeah. that you have to be in the you have to be in the game the long t the long time to know that this is how it goes. Right. And I can even go back to when I first started, and my, men my previous mentor telling me that you know you don't have to be pulling the trigger because I I did want to get in there and execute, but sitting here now and just like yesterday just marking up trade ideas as they were coming to me yep. and saving them. Yep. That was still a really good learning curve for me in my trading day because I was sitting here doing my, my markups right. and I was generating ideas, not ideas I was going to pull the trigger on yesterday because as we said, it was a bank holiday, but I'm still here doing the work and putting in the Getting errors. the reps in, getting the routine in, keeping it yeah. sharp. Yeah. So for everybody listening, like take from this, even on days where it's a bank holiday or um, it's NFP coming up like this Friday yeah. where you know you shouldn't be trading. You still need to show up. You still need to stay on point. It makes me always think of um, like, think about how many hours Kobe Bryant mm -hmm. or Michael Jordan were, were just shooting foul shots to get yeah. to the point that they had to get to. But nobody ever has seen footage of them shooting the foul shot. No one sees all of that. No one sees us sitting at our desk doing markups when there's no trades going on. No one sees that. They only see the tweets and everything that we mm -hmm. do today mm -hmm. when we win the trade. But all of that stuff beforehand in the dark, behind the scenes, it's so important to, like I said, stay sharp, you know? Yeah. When I first came to ASFX, you know, I said I must put in the 10,000 hours because yep. I used to used go to say back yep. and get these setups and look for these setups and all these, you know, and especially my British pound, my Euro pairs that I'm going to be trading. I need to see these repeatable patterns so that I can build my confidence within the setups. And that's the only way now... I can see if I hadn't put in the hours, I wouldn't be able to be as sharp as seeing the repeat right. patterns. 100%. 100%. I think that's what makes the difference. Because, like, again, going back to the call I had the other day with Tom, I, everything he's doing is great. His analytics that he's doing on his trading are great. His, he's actually profitable, even though he's only in it for the first six months, which is great. Yep. Everything mm -hmm. he's doing is great. So he was like, what do I do? I'm like, now this is where you have to do what we're talking about. Stay sharp. And that's why if you saw his post, it was – practice, apply, analyze. Because yeah, we yeah. were talking, that, that's just what I said. I was like, you need to practice, mm -hmm. which is the markups, the study, even on the no trade days. Mm -hmm. And then you need to apply it, whether it's a demo account or a real account, apply it, do what he's doing, trade, and then analyze those trades. I mean, you should see, he doesn't, like, he was breaking down his MyFX book in so much detail, looking at his sharp mm -hmm. ratio, looking all all of these different things that so many people overlook because he's trying to yep. fine tune the details. And I think that's what makes the difference. I said to him, I'm like, bro, you're doing everything that people that make money in this business long-term that I've long -term seen, too. that's yep. that's what they do. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. So going into the rest now, like I said, it's September 1st. What are you focused on now? We started the month with a winner up over 2% on the day. What are we focused on what are you focused on, I should say, the most going into September? Anything on your checklist that stands out that you've got to keep sharp with? 
No, I just honestly just take it day by day. I'm not, you know, here sitting saying, so by the end of September, I want to be above where I was this month. I really just want to be able to end each trading day by saying I stuck to my rules, I stuck to my plan, and I was disciplined and consistent. I yep. just take it day by day and grow and evolve where, where I need to. So, like, maybe the setup that's coming in that we have been looking about getting back test. So there's a guy in the chat had said, you know, Lindsay, we were looking at this yesterday and I was like, for some people, I say, don't, don't run before you can walk. So why right. not get consistent on your A1s and your D1s like we see the now that we, we have? And, and then, then add you that can later. go back and you can yeah. add that later. When you so said... for me, I'm going to do some back testing on that because I, I quite like it. And I, but only on demo. I'm still as focused as I was, you know, coming into this month, I'll always be focused on the ones Process. that were tested and proven. Yeah. Process always. When you said what you said at the beginning is really important to highlight, which is that you don't come into the month thinking I got to make 60% this month. I got to make no. 30% this month. You come in with today, I'm going to follow my rules and trade the best trades that presents. And that is the most consistent and I think most profitable approach to trading as a business that anyone can take. Yeah. So yeah. for everyone listening, that is what you want to apply is this mindset of, I don't know what the market's going to give me. None of us no, do. No, is the dollar no. tanking? Is gold really shooting up? Even, what do we know? Nobody does nothing, you know? Like a uh, soft gold thing. I don't even really go for that anymore. You've backed off that completely I, too. I really yeah, I noticed. backed off that. You're just like, showing up every day to do good. And I that's kind of how up. I feel too. I think we all do that too, in a sense. You know what I mean? I think the it goals are hard. Pressure on you. It I does. Think it puts pressure on you. 100%. And for me, I'm very much one and done. I will not, ex and, you know, unless I was coming out to a, a break even and maybe hang around for another right. good opportunity. You'd rather to come, show up like me, hit it, make the money, get make out it of it. And here. done. Yep. I'm yeah, not, and then you can roll them like you're doing 20% yeah, this yeah. month, 23% the next I've month. I've done that and not had a soft goal or a monthly goal then I've been hitting the goals without really thinking about it. Right. It's amazing, right? And it, it, this is the best I, part. I, is I actually I, think, <laughs> I think you would, I'm 100% sure you probably would have set a, a lower goal for the month of August than you would hit. So if you set a goal, I think you often will fall short of it. So by yeah. not setting the goal and instead focusing on the process, the quote from the book Atomic Habits is, you're only as good as your systems, right? You only fail system, to the uh -huh, level of your uh -huh. systems. Your you don't last, rise to the level of your goals. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, if that's the approach, I think you can actually exceed what would be a goal mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. have no goal and you're really just focused on the process. That's yep. a great way for us to, to end this little video, Lindsay. So let's plan on this. We're going to touch base always. We do our trade recaps. We're yep. going to do a couple of videos this month. But I think we need to plan to do one at the end of September. We'll circle back and we'll see how things are going. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll share with the people the value then. So for everybody watching, let us know if you have any questions. Please, as yep. always, drop the comments below. We love that you guys are getting so engaged with us in the comment section. It's actually Absolutely. Kind of awesome to see yeah. some many different traders. Yeah. And Lindsay, you know, I appreciate you. Great job yeah, last thank month. You for great jump me. in July. Always, always. <laughs> And great job on today's trade too. So for everybody, check out yep. today. We'll uh, put a recap up of this trade on GBPCAD. I'll make sure that's yep. linked above and below so you guys can check that too. All right? Yep. Lindsay, thank you. Go enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you. You too. Thank you. Talk to you later, guys. Thanks.